Here comes the notion of mind or the question about mind. What do we call mind? A Siegel is the very famous uh, uh, author in the field of neurology and neurosciences. The team of Siegel has developed a definition of mind. Uh, by the way, the definition of mind has been one of the most challenging tasks uh, in front of the scientist. So, they define human mind as a relational and embodied process that regulates the flow of energy and information. In this definition, you can see that it the mind is not equated with brain. So, brain is one aspect where mind occurs, but mind is all over. Secondly, mind is also not a, not a localized phenomena that is recognized in this definition. Stephen Parker, uh, a very famous yogi and author, in his book uh, Clearing the Path, compares the notion of Panchakosha with the Siegel's definition of mind. And Stephen Parker very beautifully juxtaposed different aspects, different components of the definition of mind given by Siegel and his team and uh, compares that with each kosha. So, as the definition of Siegel says, mind is the embodied process that is comparable with the annamaya kosha because annamaya kosha is, is also a body and it is the grossest aspect of self. Second aspect of Siegel's definition is that regulates the flow of energy and Stephen Parker compares that with the pranamaya kosh because pranamaya kosh is also sheath of subtle energy. Then comes the third component of definition of mind given in the Siegel's work that is information, mind is embodied process that regulates the flow of energy and information. If we look at our sense organs, if we look at our senses, what are these? These are nothing but instruments of capturing information. So, these are the sheath of sensory mentation. So, not of the higher mentation that takes place in the Vijnanamaya Kush, but the lower mentation or more sensory aspects, those are captured by the manomaya kosh and these are, this is nothing but information. Uh, in uh, according to some other definition, it can be looked at as the feedback because emotions are also feedback and emotions are generated through senses, probably the senses are the primitive form of emotions. These all, these all are located, these all take place in the manomaya kosh. And fourth aspect of the Siegel's definition is relational and embodied process that regulates the flow of energy and information. That element of regulation is related to Vijnanamaya Kosh and that is the sheath of higher mentation as well. But mentation buddhi here is not only meaning our conscious buddhi, our conscious decisions, our conscious thoughts, the regulation process that takes place through brain that is also part of the Vijnanamaya Kosh. So, brain is not located only in the brain, but brain is certainly very important aspect of Vijnanamaya Kosh and aspect of mind, but my, mind is not limited to brain, but that is certainly there and regulation is very important aspect of Vijnanamaya Kosh that takes place predominantly or that, that is governed predominantly uh, through different secretions of uh, uh, brain. Anandamaya Kosh is not captured in the Siegel's definition uh, as defined by, uh, as uh, kind of interrogated by Stephen Parker and 
and he describes Anand Mayakosh as the highest and subtlest mind body sheath made up of bliss. If we look at Indian tradition and few words which are pretty common in most of the Indian languages about the happiness, these are associated with different aspects of self. So, first aspect is trupti that is predominantly connected with Annamayakosh. So, after having food, the term used in the Indian languages is trupti that is satisfaction of sensual pleasure. Higher to that is harsh, ullas and santosh. Pranamayakosh and Manomayakosh predominantly experience harsh and ullas. That is excitement associated with some event, feeling of pleasantness and associated with the experience of natural beauty being pleased by the interpersonal interactions. So, uh, all these things are when experienced, we say we had experience of harsh and ullas that is pranamaya kosh and manomaya kosh that is experienced in the pranamaya kosh and manomaya kosh and santosh is some bit of that is experienced in manomaya kosh and predominantly it is experienced at vijnanamaya kosh. Santosh is the self-regulation, mindfulness, self-control, being contended. These things are not sign of Annamaya Kosh or Pranamaya Kosh or Manamaya Kosh. Santosh is experienced at Vijnanamaya Kosh. Vijnanamaya Kosh uh, makes the decision about being contended. You can give lot of pleasure to the body and body will not be satisfied. In fact, if we give more pleasure to the body, body seek more pleasure. Similarly, pranamaya kosh and manomaya kosh, you can give more harsh and ullas, excitement, uh, uh, pleasing experiences, pleasing interactions. People, uh, uh, these koshas will find it more and more, they will seek it more and more they get it. However, santosh is the satisfaction combined with the regulation. So, there is a sense of satisfaction, but at the same time there is a contentment. So, in the santosh, the seeking more is diminishes and that is experienced in the Vijnanamaya Kosh and Anandamaya Kosh is the bliss, ecstasy, uh, non-localized, uh, non-causal ecstasy that is experienced through meditation, that is also experienced through uh, uh, offering our talents, offering our aptitude for the cause of the world, for the cause which is higher than our individual Manumaya Kosh, Pranamaya Kosh etcetera. So, Anandamaya Kosh is the experience which is pursue through the different forms of yoga. You might remember, we talked about karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga and raj yoga, four predominant types of yogas. Ultimately, these yogas are the instruments or the pathways to experience Anandamaya Kosh. Those who are uh, registered for the NPTEL course, they must have received a link for the assessment of their satisfaction with the different aspects of the self. So, uh, P is related to physical, I is related to intellectual, E is related to emotional, R is related to relational and S is related to spiritual. Uh, this Pierce inventory is uh, forwarded to those who are registered in the NPTEL course and that helps us to capture our satisfaction with these physical, intellectual, emotional, relational and uh, spiritual aspects. If you look at P, the physical is more related to the Annamaya Kosh, intellectual and emotional and relational are related to uh, uh, Manumaya Kosh and Vijnanamaya Kosh and S is more related to uh, Anandamaya Kosh and Vijnanamaya Kosh. This inventory do not have 
uh, questions or items related to pranamaya kush, but if we have satisfaction at all these aspects, we can naturally believe that our pranamaya kush is healthy uh, or inversely we can say until the pranamaya kush is healthy, we cannot experience well being at physical, intellectual, emotional, relational or spiritual level. So, do you want to know what are the various psychosomatic disorder associated with the uh, uh, different sheets, predominantly associated with the different sheets. So, there are four phases of psychosomatic disorders. You might be interested to also know as different aspects of well being are connected to different aspect of the, our self or different koshas. Uh, the, uh, psychosomatic disorders also must be connected to different uh, aspect of the koshas or different koshas. Psychosomatic disorder originate from the mind and then it filters to the subtle energy of the body called the vital life force and then slowly settle into the physical body and resulting the damage to the weakest organ affecting the physiology and functioning of those organs. So, psychosomatic disorder uh, emerge through four phases, first is the psychic phase, second is psychosomatic phase, third is somatic phase and fourth is organic phase. Disorders first occur at psychic phase, meaning in the manomaya kosh or vijnanamaya kosh or pranamaya kosh. When it stays there for long time, it is reflected into the psychosomatic level, where it is at the prana and also at the gross body. After that, it result into the gross body and then it captures the all or multiple organs of the body. At all four koshas, uh, disorder can occur. So, Vijnanamaya Kosh and Manumaya Kosh has psychic phase. The, the characteristic of the disorder at the Vijnanamaya Kosh and Manumaya Kosh are related to persistent psychological and behavioral symptom of stress or irritability. This is also reflected in the disturbed sleep. Disorders at the Manumaya Kosh and Pranamaya Kosh, they are comparable to psychosomatic phase and if the stress continue uh, in the Vijnanamaya Kosh and Manomaya Kosh, it start occurring at the Manomaya and Pranamaya Kosh. It appears in the generalized physiological symptoms such as hypertension, tremors, uh, anxiety, uh, depression, mild depression start occurring at this stage. Somatic phase occur at Pranamaya Kosh and Annamaya Kosh that is reflected in the malfunction of the organs. At this stage, one begins to identify the beginning of the disease state. So, before disease actually occur in our uh, at the body level, it already happens at the psychic phase in the Vijnanamaya Kosh, Manomaya Kosh and Pranamaya Kosh. And when uh, disease fully occur at the Annamaya Kosh, that is called organic phase, that is the full involvement of so called diseased state with the physiological changes such as uh, ulcerated stomach or chronic hypertension or many other type of diseases we keep uh, noticing. Yoga is the therapy as well as preventive mechanism at all five koshas and all four phases of the disorders. So, till now we have seen in order to understand well being, we need to understand different layers of self or different koshas. These koshas are uh, prone to different disorders and if we have to live a life of well being, if we have to manage our self, we have to manage all these koshas.